OK, so now we've looked at the newton raphson method, which uses the gradient to iteratively solve a 1D function of x, say. Now we'll generalise that to figure out how to do something similar with a multidimensional function, uh, a function of multiple variables, and how to use the gradient to find the maxima and minima of such a function. Later on, this will let us optimise, find the best fit for the parameters of a function that we're trying to fit. Say I've got a function like f equals x squared y here. This function looks like this. Uh, and what I've got here is a function that gets big and positive when x is big and y is positive, and it gets negative when y is negative. So if I look down the y-axis, I get a projection of a straight line. And if I spin to look down the x-axis, I get an upright parabola for y positive, and one going down for y negative. And the function is equal to zero along both the axes. Now at the bottom here in MATLAB, I've used the surf C function to plot contours when the function has a constant value, just like the contours of constant height on a topographical map. So the question we want to answer in this video is, how do I find the fastest or steepest way to get down this graph? Now, previously you found out what the gradient of a function is with respect to each of its axes. So you can find the fdx just by differentiating the function f, treating all the other variables as constants. So in this case, we've got a, a function f of x, y is equal to x squared, y. And so df dx is equal to differentiate that, treating y as a constant. So that's just 2x times y. And uh, df dy is equal to, well, the x squared we treat as a constant, and y differentiates just to 1. So it's just x squared. Now, we can write down uh, these two gradients in a vector, which we call the grad of f. So this guy we call grad. Um, and this vector is just the vector uh, where we write them down as uh, the components of a vector. So we say that grad is that. It's just the vector found by writing down df by dx and df by dy in the x and y locations of the vector. And grad is like the most awesome vector ever. Grad is the little vector that combines linear algebra and calculus together. So grad's a lot of fun. So if we run along a little vector r is equal to dx zero, um, then if we dotted that with grad f, then we get df dx times dx plus zero. Um, so we'd move the amount dx along the x-axis. So this is doing the right sort of thing. Right? A dot product of grad f with a vector is going to take, it looks like, some amounts of df dx along the x bit of that vector and some amounts of df dy along the y bits of that vector. So it's going to tell us how much we've gone down. That's sort of how grad works. And the important thing is to remember this is evaluated at f has some values in the space, a, b. So it's evaluated at a location. So then if we want to know how much the function will change when we move along some unit vector in an arbitrary direction, so we'll call that unit vector r hat, um, and uh, we'll give it components c and d. So c squared plus d squared is equal to 1. So df is going to be df dx times c plus df dy times d. So what we're doing here is we're doing grad of f dotted with r hat. And we call this thing the directional gradient. So another question we can ask is, what's the maximum value this directional gradient can take? So we've got uh, grad f as a vector, and we're dotting it uh, with r hat. And our question is, what's the maximum value they can take, given that r hat is a unit vector? Well, the only thing then left when we dot them together is going to be the cos theta term, because it's a, b, cos theta. Um, and that's going to be maximised when cos theta is 1, uh, which means theta is 0, which means r hat is parallel to grad f. So in order to find the maximum value of the directional gradient, we want an r hat that's actually the normalised version of grad. 
So we can write that down, we can do that calculation. So we'll have grad f dotted with the normalized version of itself, so grad f divided by its modulus. But grad f dotted with itself is just equal to the size of grad f squared. Got to divide by the size. So the maximum value the directional gradient can take is just the size of grad f. And that's therefore the steepest gradient we can possibly have. The size of the steepest gradient we can possibly have is just the size of grad f, the sum of the squares of the components of grad. So that's really fun. The other question to ask is, which way does grad point? This is less easy to see, but grad points up the direction of steepest ascent, perpendicular to the contour lines. So think, if you're on a mountain and it's foggy and you can only see locally around you and you want to go down the hill, you don't walk around the contour, you go down the hill. Um, so if the contour's like this and I'm staring down the hill, down the hill is at 90 degrees to the contour line. And uh, think about uh, the way it's defined, is it up or down? Um, df dx is, is positive if you're going up. Um, so actually grad f points up the hill um, in the steepest way, and minus grad points down the hill the steepest way. So grad points up the direction of steepest descent. Now, if we have some data science problem where we want to minimize the difference between our data values and our model fit, then what we want to do is find the lowest point in the function. The function is kind of the badness, so we want to find the best, so we want to find the point where the badness is minimized. And like newton raphson we can use the gradient to go from some trial point down towards the solution. But in newton raphson we're trying to find the zero point. Here we don't know what the minimum value of the function is, so we don't know how far we down we need to go. It's as if we're somewhere on our mountain, but we don't know the altitude of the valley. So what we do in what's called the gradient descent method is we take a series of little steps down the hill. That is, if we started at some position Sn, then our, our next position, Sn plus 1, is given by Sn plus some little step down the hill, and that little step is given by minus some amount times grad. Um, and grad evaluated at the previous position Sn. On the graph, that's going to look like taking a little step, the little blue one, down the hill, uh, and then we reevaluate to make another Sn plus 1 and make another step and take a series of steps down the hill. If we overshoot, that's okay, because grad will just take us back to the minimum. And notice that as the gradient gets shallower, as we come towards the turning point, then the steps automatically get smaller because grad gets smaller. So this is quite a nice method. There are lots of ways to enhance it, but that's the main idea. It's very powerful and simple. The other thing to notice is that there are multiple local minima in the landscape, then we might get stuck in one of them. And of course, which one we find depends on our starting point. We won't find the others, we'll only find one at a time. So in the general case, there are some problems, but nevertheless, this is quite a neat method. This is just following little steps down the hill. And this is probably the main way in which most numerical optimizers work that people use in the real world. So, what we've done in this video is we've introduced ourselves to grad, the gradient vector, and merged calculus and vectors together to take our first steps in vector calculus. And that's allowed us to find a method for just using the gradient to step our way towards solving a problem for multivariable cases. And that method's called gradient descent.